Hi guys, so I am back with another installment in the preparation of series and today we are going to be discussing how to prepare the very first functional group you learn about. It consists of only carbons, only hydrogens, and there will not be a pi bond anywhere in sight. That's right, we're talking about alkanes. Surprisingly for a lot of people, there are quite a few ways to make alkanes, but lucky for you all, I have compiled them into a pretty concise video and we're going to go over all the conditions and steps and rules for each of these reactions, but I do not include mechanisms in these videos. If you want a mechanism, leave me a comment down below. Additionally, I am not including ways to attach alkyl substituents. That's a little bit different because in conditions like that, you're often not making an alkane. You have a higher priority functional group somehow involved. All right, let's get started with the video. First step is catalytic hydrogenation. This reduction reaction works for both alkenes or alkynes. You treat the alkene or the alkyne with molecular hydrogen and a catalyst. The only difference between alkenes and alkynes in this reaction is that you technically need to treat an alkyne with two equivalences of the reagent. The other thing you need to keep in mind is that if there is a chiral center present, this would result in syn addition meaning that both substituents would be on either a wedge or both would be on a dash. I have shown two examples for you that illustrate this fairly simple reaction. Up next is dissolving metal reduction with catalytic hydrogenation. This is a reduction reaction and your starting material is an alkyne. In the first step, you are going to reduce your alkyne to an alkene with a dissolving metal reduction. In your second step, you are going to treat your alkene with molecular hydrogen and a catalyst to get your resulting alkane. Both steps are required for you to get the alkane. You can't just do one or the other, otherwise you will not get your desired product, which is an alkane. Hydrogenation of benzene. This is pretty straightforward. The only starting material you can use for this is benzene because this is hydrogenation of benzene and your end product for this reaction will always be cyclohexane. So you are going to treat your benzene with molecular hydrogen, nickel, and heat. And this will reduce your benzene all the way down to cyclohexane. Reduction of alkyl halides except for alkyl fluorides. Remember guys, fluorine is our tricky little friend that sometimes likes to explode. So when you're in organic 1 and 2, I promise you it is almost always a better bet just to write bromine or chlorine when you are working with a halide because they are almost always the ones that don't break the rules. So your starting material here is going to be either an alkyl bromide or alkyl chloride and you're going to treat it with zinc and an aqueous acid and it will produce a wonderful, beautiful alkane as you can see in the examples I have drawn for you. And there will be no explosions because we did not use fluorine because we know our rules. No fluorine here. Desulfurization. This reduction reaction starts with the conversion of a ketone or an aldehyde to a thioacetal in acidic conditions. And then once we get our resulting thioacetal, we will treat that with rainy nickel, which is a special reagent that will pull off the thioacetal and leave you with your desired alkane. This is a very good re reaction to keep under your belt, especially for synthesis strategies. I found myself using this a lot in organic too. All right, the Clemson reduction. This one is also used a lot in organic too. The starting material is either a ketone or an aldehyde, and then your reagents will be written in one of two ways, either zinc and HCl, or you will see the zinc in mercury over HCl in heat. It really just depends on how your professor chooses to write it. This works in acidic conditions, and as you can see, it just pulls the carbonyl group right off, leaving you an alkane. It is a very synthetically useful reaction. 
Okay, so this reaction is actually the last step of a synthesis that goes under many names. The one I learned it as is Cori House Synthesis, but the name isn't really relevant right now. It is an SN2 mechanism with your substrate being a primary alkyl halide, and your reagent is a Gilman reagent, which I drew you an example of. It has two R groups, copper and lithium. So the R group, one of the R groups, will be attached to where the halide was when the halide comes off, and then you will get two subproducts of what happens with the rest of the Gilman reagent throughout the reaction. Of course, the byproducts aren't what you're looking for, it's the resulting alkane. Now we have the Wolf-Kishner reduction, another one that you will use in organic chemistry too and it involves the conversion of a ketone to a hydrozone, which follows the mechanism of an imine, and then the hydrozone is reduced to an alkane in strongly basic conditions. This is another reaction that I felt like was a lifesaver in organic too, and is very versatile. Again, if you want to see the mechanism for this one, this one in particular I think is important, so leave me a comment down below. To top it all off, we have a Wurtz reaction, which is a coupling reaction. Now this reaction does a few other things with other functional groups, but in regards to making alkanes, it is very limited in its uses because it only works if you have two symmetrical alkyl halides. If your alkyl halides are not symmetrical, you will get a weird mix of products that you cannot control, so that's really not helpful for you. Essentially what you do is you have your two alkyl halides and you treat them with two equivalences of sodium in a dry ether. I wrote diethyl ether because that is just my own personal preference and habit. Alright guys, that is it for this video. You survived it to the end, hopefully. Or maybe you clicked off, in which case you never heard this. But anyways, if I helped you build your synthesis strategies for preparing alkanes, please let me know in the comments below. Give me a like, subscribe to this channel. And also, I will never ever claim that I know all of the ways in the world to make something. Yes, there are definitely other ways to make alkanes. And they are very complicated and windy and twisting paths that I didn't feel were straightforward enough to be included in this video. I am not trying to scare anyone. That is not the objective of this channel. Um, also, there are plenty of ways of adding on alkyl substituents, which I think is too different to be added into this video. I did not want to make another 20 minute long video like my alcohol video. So I would rather make that a separate video. If you guys very much want to see that, let me know, leave a comment. I'm going to make, you know, what you guys want to see. All right. Have a great day. Please take a nap today. Actually don't because if you take a nap, you won't sleep tonight. So sleep well tonight. Oh my God.